Welcome to this week's episode of STS, the variety show of talking about parkour things with Tom Coppola and Rene, AKA Rez, at beautiful Origins Parkour Facility in Vancouver. British Columbia, Canada. Canada. <laughs> Precisely located. Uh, today, I think we want to uh, got to bring up first, uh, this is actually last week's news that we, we missed. This is totally old news that uh, didn't see until after last week's recording. And it's uh, WFPF is, uh, it's actually, it's big news to me. I don't know, is it big news to you? Yeah, it's yeah. pretty big. It's, they're, they're doing their first, what they're calling a pro-am competition, so professional amateur. And it's at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, other information, we got $3,000 up for first prize. Mm -hmm. Don't and know anything about what kind of competition it is other than it's a parkour competition. Mm -hmm. Ryan Doyle's going to be there. And Ryan Doyle's going to be there. Yeah. Um, any thoughts right, right off the bat about... Uh... Yeah, it's pretty big news. There, I mean, Mandalay Bay is... Um, I can't imagine that's cheap. So there's clearly, like, putting a lot into this. Um, that was my first thought. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah, <laughs> bro, what? <laughs> That's yeah. where we're starting. <laughs> yeah. Out of all the venues, <laughs> we're going to Vegas, Mandalay Bay. That's that's where you're gonna start. This yeah, thing. and it's interesting. I don't know what they're gonna try to do with it. Like, if they're gonna, I mean, I imagine they're gonna, probably gonna try to do some kind of live stream of the event. And but we don't really have a lot of information. We just know those things. We got Mandalay Bay, three thousand dollars. Pro-Am, Ryan Doyle. <laughs> and they will write you a letter if you want to get sponsors to come. Yeah, that's cool, too. Yeah. Um, it's cool that they're supporting that. But, yeah, no, it's, um, it's a pretty big thing. Mandalay Bay, again, it's not a, a small thing. I, I guess my issue with it is that it's only $3,000 first prize. <laughs> and they're probably spending a lot more on the venue. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, that, that's... that's, that's that happens in other sports and things, though, too. Sure, where yeah. Where the athletes mm -hmm. are kind of getting stiff compared to the... Not, not that I'm saying it's... Not that I'm defending and saying it's okay. It, well, you know, maybe, though, you know, to play my own devil's advocate, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe having it at Mandalay Bay is, like, the... You know, it's kind of like an attempt at bringing the level of the competition up higher to, you know, like, in terms of, like, showcase... Yeah. Um, so that in the future, it'll be bigger, and then you know people who do who win first prize will get more money eventually because it attracts more. Everything else, sponsors and audience, yeah. right? <laughs> you know the important things. Yeah. Uh, man, when I when I when I when I when you sent me the you sent me the post, and I was like, yeah, first reaction was that's. That's where the UFC is. <laughs> that's, where, yeah. that's, where, that's where prize fighting happens. Is, uh, well, actually, I think it's MGM Grand Garden Arena is where they moved to, but it, they used to do it at the Mandalay Bay. Mm -hmm. so, and the Mandalay Bay has more than one venue. So, but still, it just doesn't... I just think Vegas... Like it, there, there's probably smaller arena-type venues that one could go to first... Mm -hmm. Unless, for, unless they know, I don't, I can't imagine in, in any place in, that makes sense in the world where, where they would get a deal on the Mandalay Bay. Where like they know someone, it's like, hey, run your comp yeah. for free. So it just does not make sense to me that it's, that it's there. Um, but hey. Maybe um, they're connected enough somehow. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What, what I'm curious of is what, like, what athletes are interested in competing there. Yeah, or what this? Well, I, I'm assuming that they're gonna have a, a probably a decent setup. I hope yeah. if it's there. I hope it's not. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Not. Well, I'm curious. Let, let, let's assume that they have money for that because they have money for the Mandalay Bay, and they're, yeah. it's gonna be a really cool setup. Yeah, no, I, I imagine that they're gonna build something, yeah. like have a big build out for it. But um, I guess there's just there's just not enough information out there. Yeah. Um, there's no. We can only speculate at this point. What's yeah, <laughs> I don't think there's much information about the format. 
Although, didn't, did you tell me that it was going to be the same one as their college competition? I, I, that's what I'm, uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm speculating. That's, that's what I'm okay. assuming is that they did a college or collegiate mm -hmm. uh, parkour competition mm -hmm. that essentially did what we do, which is skill speed style. Mm. And I don't know if they're going to do the same thing because they've only said one first prize of $3,000. So. Yeah. It could just be a, they're calling it a parkour competition, mm -hmm. so there might not be actually any sort of freestyle event, but Ryan Doyle's gonna be there. <laughs> so yeah. if it's a speed comp, that's not his thing unless he's not competing. So you're saying that because it's not called a free running competition, because... Yeah, because yeah, they're actually calling it a parkour competition, right. it might not have, uh, for, for the WFPF, that might be more politically correct to them. To do well, because a, of the name of the WFPF, yeah, is World Free Running and Parkour. They do, yeah, yeah, they yeah. do use the name Free Running. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Uh, my my one big thing with it though is that just talking about the how grandiose like the <laughs> Mandalay Bay is. Yeah, it it just seems like another failure to understand that you cannot grow parkour competition that quickly without mm. without a format that people have proved they want to see again and again. You know, it's been it's been tested amongst amongst audiences, which is the, the most important thing. Is audiences yeah. want to see this thing again, because all we have is failed TV shows mm -hmm. and a bunch of like lower circuit competitions. And they've done, the only one I know that WFPF or Wolf, I can't say it. <laughs> Wolf, Wolf Puff. The only thing, you know, they've. Uh, done recently is that, that collegiate one mm -hmm. um, and before that it just seemed like a lot of I, I think they did gymnastic gym competitions where it was like yeah. WFPF sanctioned and there was a there was one I think they hosted the GCA games which yeah. is in a parkour gym in Connecticut um, and I, I heard mixed things about that event um, some of it was good some of it was bad but yeah I, I don't it, I mean, they do seem to be trying to do more events, more parkour competitions, but I, they, don't, they don't seem to have that much experience with it to, in the grand scheme of things. If you really look at just the sheer number of competitions they've done, it's, it's actually not that much. And, and that's including the original UPC yeah. on uh, MTV. Was it MTV? Is it? it is MTV. Yeah, yeah. MTV, right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to think about this my, whole my thing. My other take on it is if, you know, if someone came to you and said, hey, I want to sponsor a parkour event at the Mandalay Bay because that's where I want to do it, mm -hmm. and maybe that was their bottom line as it has to, like, probably say. Yeah, I, I would say yes. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a huge opportunity, but at the same time, if it was something that they went and pursued instead of, like, getting just a smaller, smaller arena... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then uh, I think that's probably a mistake just because you're going to spend a lot of money on something that you don't know is going to be successful. Yeah. Uh, but, I, I mean, I guess that's the nature of any kind of risk in business or Absolutely. whatever, right? You're, you're risking something. But you have to believe that it's going to be successful. So, you know, they probably have some reason to believe it's going to be successful. They wouldn't, otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but we do, I mean, but it, it's failed in the past. You know, UPC failed. The other TV, Jump, Jump City failed, uh, whatever, the newer one on CBS failed, and then, uh, and then even things like Tempest Games failed, um, or at least you know, <laughs> se seemingly <laughs> they failed. Again, yeah. they, ha they haven't done it again yeah. since three years ago. Mm -hmm. So, y yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, we'll, we'll see. I guess it's the proving ground. You know, yeah. once once we once it actually happens, once we get more information, I think we'll be able to make a more in uh, informed, yeah. uh, develop more informed opinion on it. But yeah, I think that's the only thing. The, re the reason you know I wanted to bring it up is it is it is huge news. And yeah. If it's not, if it's not big news to other people, it, it should be. I yeah. Think it's a pretty it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, so you should care about it, whether you're for or against it. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, Do you want to bring next up... Next thing, uh, next thing, yeah, Mr. Uh, well, let's say uh, Mr. Jason Paul. It's uh, a little bit of controversial thing he did. And someone, uh, someone actually commented last week because we hadn't watched the, the video. Yeah. Uh, it came out again before we recorded last week's uh, episode. Mm -hmm. 
and they said, have you seen Jason Falls' new video? What, what do you think of it? Mm -hmm. And so you know, I'm watching this thing, it's, you know, like pissed on a camera. Okay, it's Interesting. A, little, a little weird. And then, oh, he's, there he is having sex with Emily. Yeah. In the middle of his uh, parkour and travel video. <laughs> yeah. Um, and some people are upset about this, and some people are like, what's the big deal? Yeah. What well, do you think? hold on. What, what's my overall impression of the video? Mm -hmm. It was, it was a cool video. It was an interesting <laughs> video. Like, I liked it. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it had some, like, cool lifestyle elements to it. He did some, some interesting lines and, you know, had sex with Emily, <laughs> peed on a camera, rode on Several a train. Times. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it seemed like it was a fun time. <laughs> um, yeah, my whole thing with, my, my impression with, um, with the the controversial bits uh, is that I could see what he's doing. You know, he's just stirring up controversy because um, nobody else is. <laughs> so you think it was like he knew he was going to get Oh, yeah. Some, like 100%. He knew people were going to be, like, shocked, offended, interested. You know, like he, he knew he was going to be... I'm assuming he knew he was going to get a full range of different emotions. You don't and, think he was just like, and, oh, I'm going to put this in a video and it's not... Like, no. well, I think that the overall uh, I think mood I, of the video, added to the video is, is, you know, he's being cheeky, he's being on a camera mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see... I don't see... I don't fully see a problem with it. Um, it. I didn't seem distasteful the way he put it in. I don't know. Um, it's not like you get some yeah. really raunchiness going on. But it's... Yeah, it's it's intended to be shocking. It's intended to be different because you don't see that in in parkour videos. Parkour videos very much like there's this there's this one side of the culture that's like super conservative and mm -hmm. like you know like really hesitant to like put anything kind of you know different in a in a video. And then there's the other side that you know he's trying to push, which is yeah. You know. we, we've seen all of store naked at this point yeah you yeah know. see that's actually a really good point but i i'm sure <clears throat> i'm sure some people say something about that mm. um i'm sure it's not completely taken in you know in, in jest i'm sure a lot of people <laughs> it's funny because like it. because very like there's a definitely a uh a, a parkour meme that involves like you know gayness and like nudity and nudity and dudity let's yeah. be real it's dudity there's not girls partaking yeah in this. being being cheeky with your sexuality yeah that, that's literally. that's like that's like a meme yeah. and then like jason paul puts in like like heterosexual sex in a video <laughs> and like everybody's like oh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? so it's if it was with a dude it yeah if, okay. yeah exactly if it was him and yeah. Uh, um, um, no, that's that's interesting. It's it's kind of funny actually. That didn't really think about. That. <laughs> I'm, I'm not surprised at the backlash, and I'm not. I don't necessarily disagree with anyone that that doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of goes back to stuff like uh, remember that photo of Justin Flair with like the whiskey. Yeah. And Cold some people whiskey. were, and one of the other sponsors they had for their their tour, and some people were up in arms about the the image it was putting out there, and it's like, well, that's their image. And I think someone, yeah, there was a, a group that wrote a petition to tell them to remove <laughs> yeah. one of their sponsors that, you know, objectifies women. Oh, that was the Molly Water. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's, so don't watch their videos, don't go to their tour, don't, don't support it. Like, writing them a petition letter, that's just, just a really bizarre way of... <laughs> of yeah. Uh, that side of the culture really bugs me because they're the same people that are like, you know, oh, like we can't have any sponsors that are like questionable in any way. Like Red Bull is a bad sponsor. And it's like, well, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're putting on an event that nobody else is doing right now and, um, and supporting athletes in the community more than you can, you are. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, to, to me, that that side of the culture is just um, complaining about a problem that doesn't really exist. 
in yeah, in a lot of ways. Uh, it's like I'm not gonna it, I'm not gonna watch the off the edge tour and be like, you know what? Now I'm gonna start drinking Molly water and object objectifying women, or like now now I'm gonna start drinking cold cock whiskey because yeah. that seems like because I want to get drunk and like. That's I, I don't really drink that much anyway. Like yeah. it's not I, something that's gonna affect me. I think the point was uh, that by accepting these sponsors, you are then saying that these sponsors are part of the parkour image, which isn't true. It's part it's of their, their image. image. Yeah, it's and that that was like end of discussion for me yeah. <laughs> always. But I uh, mean, you can make an argument that th that Jesse O Flair is a. Uh, is a, um, a, a, a role model for, for kids, youth in the sport, mm -hmm. but, um, but I don't know, like, it's, like, it, to me, it, to me, the, his, his image with holding the, the cold cock whiskey, I don't see, like, a 13-year-old kid saying, like, oh, wow, I want to drink cold cock whiskey now, like, <laughs> Are we just giving like cold cock a plug right now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So um, we're <laughs> you know what? Just to cover bases, don't drink cold cock whiskey. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we, wouldn't it be amazing if I just like yeah, pulled pulled up up. <laughs> <laughs> instead drink Kafka's coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Available only next door to the gym. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, back back to the back to the video really quick. Yeah, uh, I I think it's one of the other things that I, I think makes it more alarming. I guess with uh, uh, Emily and Jason is these are these are they're not actors, right? It's almost like two you know a celebrity couple in, in a way kind of came out and like released like a partial sex tape. And then what would we you know what would that get? Yeah. What kind of attention in media would that get? You know, if it's yeah. uh, you know. Uh, a tennis player and his girlfriend, you know, release like a video of like a a sex tape, which you know is very PG and that, well, not necessarily actually. It's you know, we got about half naked there. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, but we didn't see butts. I know, but I, but I, I I can't help but think all this stuff. Even even the store, like you know, uh, videos mm -hmm. and stuff. And yes, it's. Be I think it's just we're so used to it because it's been a little bit at a time. Yeah. And and store their whole thing is they've always been. Yeah. Like that, you know, they've always been like the, their original videos. They've, they've actually toned it down. Their original videos are stuff where they're, you know, on top of buildings throwing snowballs at people and lighting up firecrackers and, you yeah. know, basically. Um, well, like Jason's, <laughs> like, Jason's Snapchat is not exactly PG. Yeah, I don't have Snapchat, so. Um, but. Yeah, I mean. But I guess it's, it's, it's a place he, where he's been, but the, I feel like he's been pushing, pushing that. Mm -hmm. And just seeing where he can, where yeah. where he where the line is, he's trying to find yeah. the line, and he's like constantly trying to cross it just to see like what the reaction is going to be. Yeah. And uh, and you know what? I think um, ultimately, if he's okay with it, and Emily's okay with it, then it's okay. Yeah. Because it's not like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Like and if you don't like it, don't watch it. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, always exactly. the. Yeah. If you don't like one. it, don't watch it. Don't support don't support it and like you know maybe not watch jason paul's videos anymore because yeah. it's you know probably he gonna might, be more. <laughs> yeah he, he might piss on some more cameras and you know and uh yeah who knows what he'll do next but yeah. no it, it's interesting i i found i found it really interesting that it that he that 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 was part of the video um not in a good or bad way i was just interested it's like wow like this you know it i could see what he's doing and um and I can I can respect that he's like he's trying to push. I think he's intentionally push the poking borders. the bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's poking yeah. the bear exactly. Okay. Uh, so I want to bring up one one more thing. Um, so the the most recent Giles compiles. He uh, Giles Giles. This was the best episode in my opinion. Yeah, it's getting. It's it's gotten a lot better. It uh, he's sort of. Um, yeah, he's talking. He's like he's being more critical of things that are happening in in particular people's movements, but not just that. But using that as like a um, a way to talk about a greater problem in the community of how people are training or or or, or doing things. Mm -hmm. And I thought I thought this episode was really interesting. So he talked about. Um, 
there's I can't actually remember the guy's name uh, or the video that oh. that he was talking about. We'll, we'll add it in later. We'll add it in. <laughs> okay. So there's there's a guy who who does um, he does like flips and he he has like skills and, and Giles was critic was you know he was like you know he was featuring him on the show which is one thing, but he was also being a little critical saying you know this guy like tends to learn a lot of the moves that other people learn. Um, and he's and he's applying them in the same ways that other people are applying them, and so there's nothing that really makes him stand out that much as an athlete. He's doing it well, like it's not like he's he's performing poorly. It's just that he hasn't developed his own unique style for the for you know uh, in, in yeah in parkour, and it's. And I think that's a, a really representative of a greater problem in parkour. And I see it a lot at the gym where, uh, where people are just learning how to do the hard moves that they see. Uh, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of them are, are younger. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're learning to do like castaways and, and, and you, know, you know, whatever other like tricks, like bar tricks or whatever that are... Um, that it's basically it feels like it's preventing them from developing a style and just learn and instead it's just a mimic mimicry it's learning how to do the tricks that everyone else is doing in in it's like what's popular oh i'm gonna yeah. learn how to do this oh i'm gonna see how low my cast can get um and it's one thing if you're genuinely interested in that stuff and that's fine i think that's important but i think it's important also to criticize that and suggest that you know you know Maybe instead of focusing purely on those things, that you develop a style first and then find where, where what you want to learn that fits with that style. What was yeah, I, I think there's, there's two ways of looking at it. Yeah. Like one is, you know, sometimes you watch videos and someone does a move, you're like, whoa, right. I haven't seen that before. I want to try that. And then it just happens every single time. Basically, you watch a video almost of someone that you, a style that you do like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, but there is definitely a checklist now of, of uh, popular tricks. Yeah. You cast, castaways off of stuff. Swing cast. Swing cast. Uh, yeah. What else did we have in there? I think there were a couple of uh, gainer variations or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, you know, you cork off of something. Mm -hmm. Dub off something, like whatever. It's yeah. uh, it's becoming. These are hard moves. Like these are really hard moves, and and it's not a knock on anyone that can that can do them. It's just if that's kind of like your video is showcasing all these all these moves, and particularly if it's if it's parkour, because a lot of these things you can do almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. too. And I think that's almost like what what I feel like he should have Giles should have been getting at more is there's not a whole lot of creative interaction with space. Mm -hmm. It's just. It's kind of almost like what I used to do when I started parkour. It was like, look for, I learned how to do a Kong on something. You know, this is like 13 years ago, but yeah. I, I learned how to do a Kong on something. And it's like, oh, where else can I do it? Yeah, it's, it's wh what other com complex environmental conditions can you mm -hmm. put that, that move into? Yeah. And I think that's, he does get to that, though. Later in the episode, he talks about Blaine. He brings, yeah. he, uh, the archives, he brings back Blaine's um, Power is Nothing Without Control video. And that, and he talks about basically the fact that Blaine, you know, it's all, it's not basics, he was, is what Giles says, it's fundamentals, mm -hmm. right? And um, fundamentals doesn't have to be basic, it could be something that's actually really quite difficult, but using, um, using the fundamentals of, of movement to accomplish a task, whether it's a precision jump and you're just putting it in the most complex scenario you can th think of. It could be Kong precision, or, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, the video looking back at it now, it's not like super impressive, but at the time it was very impressive because he was doing things nobody else was doing, which was, you know, really pushing the level of the fun fundamentals, right? And, um, and, and the way I see it is actually, I think there's a piece of it that's missing that Giles could have talked about, which is, um, so you can take these fundamentals and increase the complexity of the environment you apply them in, and then you can learn all of these like cool, complex tricks in very simple environments, like um, you know, you know, off of a ledge onto grass, and then like cart full or you know whatever, and then you can take 
the fundamentals and the complex tricks and see which types of environments and, and that you can apply everything in. And so I think that's when you get to see some really interesting styles emerging, um, particularly at the highest level where you, got, you have guys doing like the craziest flip precisions that um, that happen, right? Like mm -hmm. where it's a complex skill and a complex environment, um, and there's fundamentals there, like landing and and uh, yeah. and maybe comboing it with other fundamentals, um, like some of the basic vaulting and and, and whatever. Um, I, I see that sort of as the direction of uh, of the of the of the highest level, yeah. right? Um, is yeah, it's 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 being able to apply. You got athletes like Bart. You got athletes like. Uh, That's, yeah, for some reason, I'm thinking. Example. For some reason, I'm thinking of Max Cave. Even like he doesn't have. He has a couple of tricks though. You can do. Right. You just don't see very often because he's doing these other insane jumps no one else mm -hmm. does, and occasionally he'll pop something out of mm -hmm. at the end. But. Now, now, so like somebody like Alfred Scott, mm -hmm. who, like, he doesn't seem to showcase very much fundamentals but the interesting about his movement is that he's seeking out rare tricks yeah like he popularized the swing casts mm -hmm. um, and swing cast folds and like and, and all those things and then he's constantly coming up with newer more interesting moves but then he's also taking those moves and then applying them into a really complex environments like he's trying to do um, uh, or he was trying to do at the at the Gio park um, uh, double flyaway regrab, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's like the one thing, one criticism I would have of him is I would like to see him apply more fundamentals as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that he can't do it. I have seen him do Occasionally lines. Occasionally he does. I've seen him do lines, but like, uh, I, I think. I think that that's what would take him to another level. Like he's already at another level with what he does, but mm -hmm. that would sort of round out his game and fill in some of the holes, and it would make for really interesting runs that he could put together, mm -hmm. and potentially make him like one of the best freestyle athletes in the world. Yeah, um, which he already probably might be considered, but mm -hmm. yeah, uh, who knows. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th I thought the I thought what Giles said was really really an important takeaway. Um, you know, you, you, the cool thing about parkour for me is th how you apply skills to an environment, mm -hmm. not just that you've learned skills, right? Yeah, I think uh, you know I I started parkour kind of in the era where it was parkour, and if you're doing flips. You know, I got into it but very quickly. There was already a, a distinction between, you know, parkour and, and doing flips and tricks. And there was, there was parkour and then there was other stuff. And then we were calling that free running. Um, and uh, I wasn't naturally good at, at flips. I'm still not. And so that just kind of gave me a reason not to work on them. Yeah. You know, it's like everyone was encouraging me not to. <laughs> the people I was looking to were encouraging me not to. So I didn't work on them. And... Uh, I would, one of my knocks on people that were doing them at the time particularly was a lot of times it was just be like, learn a gainer in the gym or something and just go find like a, a garbage can or like an electrical box or something to do it off of onto grass. And, you know, do a shitty back roll out of it or, or you know, land your hands or whatever. Back uh, roll out of a gainer? I was thinking more backflip. <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you get what I'm saying? Uh, and my, my, my knock was on it was just like it wasn't very creative because I was trying to do like go to a spot and you know play ground as lava <laughs> and you know do like tiny little cat leaps and you know all these just really like experiencing the architecture and I felt like a lot of the guys that were just focusing on flips at the time weren't doing that and then we had you know arguments about that and they were saying well it's different you know because you can do flips and things off of different structures and I think yeah. only now we're actually really seeing that though only in the last you know couple of years are we actually seeing people take flips you know doing doing flip precisions doing you know Stuff where that's what was being argued before is like, no, no, you can still like be creative with the architecture and stuff doing these really complex moves, but it took time because you have to get really good at them. Yeah. And people just weren't that good at them before. Yeah. Well, and the level wasn't there. Just like yeah. the culture hadn't experienced it yet. And yeah. so because nobody else was doing it, you, did, you didn't have the desire to push it that much further, right? So it had, we had to catch up. There had to be, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, coffee spill. 
Oh, dope. I've been holding mine the whole time because we don't have a table or anything. Yep, I so should have done these. the same. A little, we just need a little table. I had a table last time. A little table in front. In wouldn't front you, wouldn't you guys this. like that? Wouldn't you guys like a little table? So we don't spill yeah. our coffee? Uh, they probably like us when we spill yeah. our coffee because it's way, more interesting. I wonder how much this music is coming in. We got Jackson Wong's uh, pop playlist going on right now. <laughs> a little bit of Nicki Minaj and <laughs> everything in the background for today's episode. <laughs> Should be good. Anyway, um, you want to finish your thought there? <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, just the, <laughs> um, yeah, the takeaway is, yeah, learn skills. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool to learn new skills, um, but if you can't apply them to varying environments, more complex environments, then you have to question whether or not learning that skill is actually worth your time. That's pretty harsh. Yeah, it is. That's a little, that's a little well, harsh. Well, yeah, so it I'm, is. I'm just thinking of, I'm thinking of uh, you know, basically recreational type people doing parkour too. You know? Yeah. I think we got to be clear what we're, who we're talking about because yeah. if we're talking about those people, it's, it's well, like you're not going to knock on something like, you shouldn't be learning a back. <laughs> no, no, I, but it's not, I'm not telling people not to learn the skills, mm-hmm. but, I, but it, it's something that I think that, I, I think it's important for them for for them to to think about like how you how useful learning something is going to be to them in in the long run, right? Yeah. Um, like for me, I the, you know I use the the foam pit rarely, you know, mm-hmm. and there are certain flips that I've worked on in the foam pit where I'm like, oh, this is really fun. I'm learning this skill, and then I start thinking about like where I would apply it and how I would actually use it in my in my repertoire, and it's like. Well, I don't actually see myself taking this outside of the foam pit because I'm not, I don't really want to do a double side flip outside. Mm. It's not something that's like I'm really hurting to do, but I'll do it all day in the foam pit and it's fun. Yeah. Um, but how, how much of my time should I be spending actually working on double side flips um, versus how much time I should be spending on working like side flip precisions because mm-hmm. that's actually something I am very interested in yeah. applying, right? Um, I think, I mean, and it's not like I'm not getting anything good out of practicing doubles. Mm-hmm. I'm probably getting something good out of it, but there's also, there is a specificity that I have to think about in my practice that, you know, how useful is that going to be in the long run? Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, if you want to learn skills, learn skills. Like, like do that and l- learn them in yeah. the foam pit. And then Learn as many as possible. Yeah, learn as many as possible. Variety is king, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Variability is king. Doing more different things is good. Mm. But also doing more different things in varying environments is even better. Yeah. That's, I think that's what ultimately I'm trying to get across. <laughs> if, you, if you practice the same castaway in the same spot every day, you're not going to really get... You're going to improve your castaway in that mm-hmm. context, but in other contexts, it's not necessarily going to be the case. Yeah you're not going to be able to transfer it over to other environments. Well. I, I want to really quickly bring up an example of this, too, uh, where we just had a competition on Saturday. Mm. And it's, it's very amateur-level competition. It's, very op- it's open competition. Uh, we encourage beginners to come out, uh, you know, all levels. Uh, even though we do award, like, a first place and everything, it's really just about, you know, applying your skills under pressure and trying to put things together and learn from it. But uh, we had a freestyle event, and what we're trying to promote is is – freestyle combos, you know, linking, linking stuff together. together, not doing, and this is where, when Giles kind of said this in his episode about a uh, particular athlete we're talking about doing competition style runs, I was like, what do you mean competition style run? How can you even say that right now? How can you say something is a competition style run? What competition are we talking about? I'm talking about Red Bull, where you do a move and you get to like, over to another move and then over to another move, like that's, that's one style of competition, which I actually think sucks, <laughs> I know you agree. Uh, and so we're trying to do, encourage uh, athletes to do shorter runs and, and uh, shorter combos, you know, do your three, four, maybe five moves. Still could be more, but basically trying to encourage a shorter run where you're linking together moves, which is more applicable to what's being practiced. And we found, I think, this weekend that uh, a lot of athletes can't even do that. Yeah. They can't, uh, they have, again, these single moves they like doing, but they're missing the, the fundamentals. And this is, again, at the amateur level, they're missing the fundamental moves to link them together, and we scored them appropriately. The one, the one, I think the one athlete that actually succeeded at linking together is twelve. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And but because he has 12. he has a lot of parkour skills. He has a lot yeah. of 
talking about, mentals. Talking about Nikita, Instagram, the titties. Is it still in the titties? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> awesome. Um, he's a dope kid. <laughs> yeah, he's, but he, yeah, he's been doing parkour longer than a lot of people have, actually, mm -hmm. because he started when he was so young. Yeah. Like, I, I asked him, like, I asked him how long he's been doing parkour. This is a while, but a while ago. I asked him how long he's been doing parkour for, and he's like, I don't know. Like, because he, he doesn't know where the line of, yeah. like, I was just playing as a kid, and I'm doing parkour now. He doesn't, mm -hmm. he doesn't know that line. Which is so cool to me because yeah. it's like the it's like when people say like oh how long have you been doing parkour or when did you start doing parkour it's like when did you stop yeah and it's like no there's a clear time yeah. when you started and like started doing parkour yeah um, but with <laughs> but not Nikita <laughs> not not with Nikita like Nikita it's like mm -hmm. I mean his older brother did parkour and then sort of got him into it as yeah. a as like a five year old mm -hmm. or a five or yeah, six yeah he he lived near a park that we would have frequent sessions at. Yeah. There's, a, there's a park in Vancouver where we would have frequent uh, training sessions at, and he would just show up on a scooter yeah. and be like, I can do that, I can do, I can do that. that. And then, yeah, now we can't get rid of him. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to, though. He's no. a good kid. Very good. Anyway. Cool. Um, I to oh, I got one sip left. I still have, like, two yeah. sips left, even though I spilled um, half of my coffee. I, I just want to say real quick, uh, next week we're going to be skipping next week's episode. Uh, we're going to try to only do this, uh, not only, we'll be doing this show three times a month. So three weeks out of four <laughs> shows per month, just to give us a week off, just in case, you know, it's, there's nothing going on. So we always kind of have fresh stuff to talk about. We yeah. had some fresh stuff to talk about today, though. It was, yeah. it was good. It was good talk. <laughs> All right. Real quick, if you haven't seen it, um, our, uh, our own, very own, Alyssa Serpa, mm. just released her year seven video. It's on the uh, Origins YouTube channel, so you can check it out there. Um, and, oh yeah, and our very own Jackson Wong also mm. released his mini sampler, uh, which is on his own channel, Jaxo Saxo, so you can check that, that out. It's Katy Perry now. Katy awesome. Perry. This is Jackson's music choice, by the way, so everyone knows. <laughs> this is what Jackson listens to. Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj. All right. <laughs> We're done. Cheers.